Yay, welcome to Lang Time Chat. I was gonna say episode something. I think it's eight. Seven or, nine or ten. Sure. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I really have lost count. Um, mm -hmm. but this is also interesting to me because we only do it once a month, and I feel like we just started Lang Time Studio, but like February has apparently been a while. Um, and so simultaneously, yeah. it feels like February was a decade ago, but also like just the other day that we started. It's so, got to be at least episode nine because we added the third uh, guest host in episode seven. <laughs> that's right. Jesse, you going to introduce me or what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good imitation. You just need the cigar. <laughs> Bananas are in bloom. <laughs> That's his catchphrase. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, so um, for anyone following along, that did not happen. <laughs> I just wanna make sure people know they didn't miss something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're on some undetermined number of podcast episodes. It's very exciting. And if you recall from last month, we had a game and I, I had so much fun with the game in terms of running the game that I decided we're gonna have another game day. Mm. Um, totally different game, but still obviously language inspired. Mm -hmm. and, and I have my sound effect here. Um, but like in general, I just love games. I like game shows. I like playing board games. I like having trivia nights. So like this whole, you know, COVID thing has really weighed heavy on my game soul because be, we've tried, like I tried with some of my friends to play on Zoom and it just mm -mm. wasn't the same. And it's like, as much as you want it to be the same, it just isn't. So it's kind of sad. Um, but I do love games like so much that I actually incorporate them into my classes. And so like, um, some of my favorite ones, whether my students like it or not, I don't know, but I love it so much that they have to like it. Um, but like when I teach my students about word origins and the difference between like words that we've borrowed from other languages versus like native words, and I try to get them to understand etymologies and the importance for like understanding history of where our language came from. So then we play Scrabble in class, but the, the catch, is that every word you play has to be native to English. It cannot be borrowed from any other language. And so like it gets them into etymologies, but it's also like really funny when they keep thinking like, oh, this word must be native. It's super small and little and it's so easy. And then they're like, oh, French. <laughs> and so that's just one example, but I get like, this is how into games I am. By the way, have we talked about how as a five-year-old, um, I used to frequently watch uh, the dating game, the newlywed game, and Love Connection. Have we talked about that? No, I don't think so, because I'm so excited to hear that, because I, too, watched all of those as a kid and yeah. just loved them. And, like, I mean, at the point where, like, I was young enough that I didn't know when I started watching, because if you watch the newlywed game, there's a whole lot of whoopee going on, and I didn't know what whoopee was. <laughs> and the only thing I could think of was like, do you remember those? I swear they were called whoopie pies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those little like yeah. chocolate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I kept thinking like it had something to do with whoopie pies. <laughs> so it doesn't. <laughs> as far uh, as I know, I don't know. <laughs> now, I'm afraid you're going to have to be second in line for this theoretical podcast because I've already promised my Love Connection podcast to somebody else. But um, I really do think it, it's it, there should be a podcast where we rewatch episodes of Love Connection just to see how, how shocking it is. Because, uh, I mean, for those that aren't aware, the, the setup for Love Connection, right, is that some person, the contestant, goes on a date with three other people, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're actually watching the show, all the dates have happened. Um, they have pre-recorded introductory videos for the contestant and all three people that the, the contestant went on a date with. And um, you're seeing them at the end. And 
they uh, bring them out and they're asked about how their date was. Uh, and then the audience watches, um, often in horror, as they describe right. the date. And then at the end, and this is the part that mm -hmm. I found so baffling, um, the audience gets to vote yes. on who they think the contestant should go out on another date with. It's going to be one of the three. Mm -hmm. And then the contestant gets to decide. And if they match up, then it's great. If they don't match up, then they get a prize if they go on a date with whom the audience wanted them to go on the date with. And so I would watch Love Connection and see, and he was usually this way, it was usually when it was the girl that was contestant with, with the three guys. I just look at these guys like, wow, well, that guy is just an absolute disaster. One of the worst people I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. Uh, and just an awful, awful person. Um, and then you'd go to the voting, and the all the audience voted for that guy. And now, if I recall, though, and I think this is how it was in the original, and like I'm, I'm saying original for a reason, um, yeah. because did you know they remade it? I know. With Andy Cohen? Okay. So I watched that, too. Like, that's how big of a fan, though, I was of the original, that I was like, well, wow. I'm going to watch the updated, too. But like the audience votes before they hear about the dates. So like they vote based on hearing the profiles of the three people and they vote what? who they like, yeah, they vote before they hear ah. about the dates, which is why they don't always match up, which is why sometimes it's like the horrible, awful date that wins. It's because they lock in their votes on their little devices just from hearing like, here's the profile of our contestant here's the three profiles of the people who do you think will be the best match and then you hear Whoa. about the dates. that's yeah. shocking to me wow okay and because, so oh, wow i just thought that like 80s people were trash you know <laughs> like <laughs> like we want you to go out with this horrible date um and so also um in the Changes updated exactly. version because the updated yeah. one, like it's the same, everything is just as you otherwise remember it. Um, but it, there was a contestant on there whose parents met on Love Connection and they made oh. a Love Connection and they're still together. And Whoa. so she went on to find her love and I don't think it worked. <laughs> I, if I remember correctly, it didn't work for her. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Now I feel like I at least have to watch that one. Dang. It's um, like some episodes are obviously better than others. Um, but like the prize this time around was $10,000. So you either got a weekend plus $10,000 if they matched you up with the one you picked, or you had to choose if you picked someone and the audience had picked somebody else you then had to like face the person face to face and decide whether I'm going to pick you or the money. Oh, that does sound like something that's more reality television, doesn't it? Right. And so it was like, that was the part that I was, you know, like how, how much of a love connection are you really looking for? If no matter what you can walk away from it with at least $5,000 or $10,000, you know, because if you win, you would, I think you split the 10,000 with the person you won with. Mm. But like, otherwise, you get to just like take 10,000 and run. <laughs> yeah. I don't hmm. know. That just seems a little like I would go on just to get the $10,000 and then go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I pick money. <laughs> so, yeah. Love. For me, Love Connection, I, I far preferred it to the newlywed game and the dating game. Um, I did in the 80s. I think now the newlywed game, I find more hilarious. And so like even, because every once in a while I'll catch some, like they'll have some retro game shows on like the Game Show Network. Um, mm. Every now and then I'll catch an episode. And I think too, like as a kid, dating seems more relatable than like a game about how well do you know your spouse? And now when I'm watching that, having been married for a year or two, uh, <laughs> 14, whatever, um, like I think it's funnier now seeing, especially whenever their answers don't match and they're like so confident like, that 
this is the right answer and it's really funny it's like and then the audience like oh now you're stuck with them <laughs> you shouldn't have gotten married i think the funniest though was one of the make and whoopee questions and the guy answers and when the wife comes out she's like that wasn't me mm. <laughs> like, he had the wrong woman in mind okay uh. Just uh, I'm just googling um, dating uh, newlywed game divorce real quick. Anyway, go ahead. I mean, just surely. Go right ahead. I mean, let, let's let us move on. Okay, so we're gonna go on to our While game. playing the newlywed game led me to divorce. Huff post. Top hit. Reading it after this. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, we actually got on this conversation because you said you had an idea about a podcast. Oh yeah, that it, so it, first of all, I came up with this idea with another friend, with uh, Samantha up in Seattle. So really, I'm sorry, she she has right of first refusal, but it's where gotcha. we rewatch old episodes of Love Connection. So it would make more sense as a video podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think we could get the rights to it. So it's it's really just a pie in the sky idea. But it would be the idea where like you you'd see both of us there, and then the main yes. thing would just be watching episodes of Love Connection and and commenting on it. Um, is this this is something if? that we can just do for fun on our own Obviously. without recording it. Um, so if you did a podcast, I think you have to do what a lot of the current rewatch podcasts do, where you watch the full episode before you record the podcast and assume that your viewers did the same and then you talk through the episode. Otherwise you're right, like it's not gonna mm -hmm. work. You have to see, yeah. in Love Connection, you have to see the people, like it yeah. just, and so, yeah, you're right. Were you thinking like mystery science theater kind of view party where it's like you see the backs of your heads and then you have yep. the big screen or like, yeah, most, were you thinking? Mostly Except uh, we have front-facing cameras now, so you can actually see the, the front of our faces, too. Yeah. We do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, by the way, I think sounds fabulous if that podcast ever got made. Um, but you're right. There are probably some, like, issues. Okay. Yeah. So now I need to see. We're going to see if this works. I'm going to share my screen. Woo! Screen share, screen share, screen Why share, does it say screen share. Unknown. It is not unknown. Oh, you know what? Okay, so while you're waiting, okay, I have to open security and preferences, and I have to allow Zoom. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, oh, this is sad. Mm -hmm. Is it not going to let you record it if you share oh. your screen? Wait, it worked. It said it wouldn't let the settings change until I stopped recording and like stopped the session. Yeah. But now it's letting me, I still see our red dot. We're still recording. Yeah. Okay. So we are just going to move forward like that never happened. Yes. <laughs> we are Link playing. Sanity. That's right. Ling Sanity. Uh, you're going to stack the facts to win big. Uh, I don't okay, know what you're okay. winning yet, but you're gonna, okay. you're gonna do some winning that's, in life. Well, that's the awesome. <laughs> the awesome thing is that when I win, I get to choose my prize, oh, and it's definitely gonna be something you own. <laughs> <laughs> but my child is mine. <laughs> I mean, you say that now, but when I tell you how many of your gnomes I'm going to be claiming. <laughs> I may reconsider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this game is based on the game show Win Sanity. Which and I don't know. Win Sanity is hosted by Donald Faison. Really? I yes. met him. <laughs> yes, you did on that one. Um, yeah, that tell one. the truth. Yes, thank you. I was like, that one. Um, so he is the host of Win Sanity. And it is a delightful game, to, a, way, a good way to spend a day because it's a mixture of trivia, but it's also based on numbers. And so like yes. you have to put facts in order. Um, and of course at the beginning, it's super easy. And then as you get more and more, it starts getting really intense. And um, 
it's just a lot of fun. Plus Donald Faison, he's cool. So yeah. it's fun to watch. Love so it. we are going to play that game, but with language facts. And I've just realized for people at home, I've shared my screen in presentation mode so that David can see the facts written big on his screen. Now I'm going to be reading yes. and I'm going to be narrating. So like, that's not what concerns me. What concerns me is I'm going to have to exit the play mode every time you tell me where to stack a fact. <laughs> so this, <laughs> because my goal, what, like what I was going to do was drag it over to the other side, but I'm realizing I can't manipulate PowerPoint slides when they're open in play mode. So, ah. you know, we're just going to deal and we're going to figure it out. Every once in a while, I may say, let's pause for a moment. <laughs> Let's pause for station technical, identification. Technical uh, difficulties, but yes. Uh, I will say this though, uh, just in case uh, for all the, the Apple techs listening, wouldn't it be amazing if you could manipulate your slides while you were using them? Um, and one idea I had, like especially for the type of presentations I give, I often get a lot of questions um, from people that I've gotten before but it's like, imagine if I could just say, oh, you asked that question here, I'm just gonna press on this part of the screen to jump to this set of slides that mm -hmm. I already prepared for this, but I didn't happen to include. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. And you could just do things like that. And yes, dragging things on the screen. You could do things like pulling the audience live, like, what do you think about this? And you know. That would be <sighs> so nice. And yeah, the dragging on the screen, I realized like, as you're saying that, I'm like, technically there's a way I could have done this, because like I'm limiting the number of facts that you're going to be stacking mainly because I was, you know, thinking cognitive overload for people listening, trying to sure. <laughs> trying to play along at home because I encourage you to do that while David is thinking his answers out because that makes it more fun. Um, but I could have, because the, the choices are limited, I technically could have made slides for every potential answer you gave me, but that also seems a little bizarre to spend that much time. Yeah. When I could also just exit presentation <laughs> mode and tell you don't read ahead to the next facts, okay? However, having seen your, um, your stress presentation, uh, stress assignment presentation, I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> I would not either. <laughs> and that's probably why it's a good thing I didn't think of that till just now because I would have spent hours <laughs> making this with a detailed guide about where I need to click next, depending on what David answers. This is why you're good to work with. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. All let's right. do it. Round I'm so one. excited because I have no idea what this game is like. All right, go. <laughs> Round one. Now, hopefully you're able to stack these facts. Otherwise we're off on a bad foot. You lose and I'm going to have to find another contestant. Okay. No problem. Oh, I'll get more. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. You have two facts to stack. <laughs> duo for the win. Oh, okay. So this is a duo lingo round. The first fact is number of languages currently offered for English speakers on Duolingo. And so that is an important factor to consider. Um, and that's actually the number of language courses, right? Um, because they offer a lot of courses for speakers of other languages, but this is specific to how many courses could you sign up for as an English speaker on Duolingo. That's fact number one. Fact number two is number of learners currently learning High Valyrian on Duolingo. So those, so that's the actual number of people enrolled in the course currently on Duolingo according to their website and according yeah. to their website as of three days ago. So I feel like I need to date this information, September 15th, 2020. So that way, if you watch this in a few months and you go verify, it may be different, but I just wanna say as of this date, it's current. So you need to tell me which one is higher and which one is lower. That's all okay, you gotta so do. Right on, okay, so that was, that was a nice one. Okay, so definitely the number of learners currently learning High Valyrian on Duolingo is much higher. It's probably hovering around 500,000, uh, whereas the number of courses offered for English speakers on Duolingo, I want to say is around 60. Okay, so you 
are correct on the orders and let me drag. So number of languages currently offered and number of learners. You got the order correct. So number of learners of High Valerian, because my screen all of a sudden stopped sharing because I left presentation mode, mm. I didn't hear your guess about how many. Now, mind you, this is not part of the game. This is just for funsies. Let's see like yeah. how close you can get on the numbers. What was your guess on that? Uh, how close uh, is going to be close enough? Should I get it down to like the within one three digit? <laughs> within within three, I'm going to say four hundred and eighty six thousand. You are incorrect. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Five hundred thirty one thousand learners are enrolled. Now I don't know because on all of them they really only give you like five thirty one k or whatever. So it's like they don't go to the ones digits. And I yeah. don't know if that just means they wait until they hit the next thousand mark to update or whether they round up. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. But there are 531,000 learners currently learning High Valerian. Now, number of languages from the screen I could access, mm -hmm. I heard you say 60. Yeah. 36 is the, the answer. And so, that and I... I counted so many times because you pull up that screen like I want to enroll in whatever. And if you pull up the screen and you're an English speaker, there were 36. Well, of course, uh, when it comes to the incubator, there are three levels of beta. And so I'm not sure what level that includes. But well, it I'll had some that. it had some beta because like um, down near the bottom, there were some beta modes, um, and I can't even remember which languages they were on. And so it did include beta, but I'm not at a super high level. So I could imagine that it's like public beta versus your part of Duolingo beta. Right. But, yeah. You know, and you're wearing an actual Duolingo shirt as we do this. Yeah, so like, yeah, I yeah. feel like you probably have access <laughs> to 24 more languages than I do. Probably do, but I'll, I'll that's that's fine though. Okay, thirty six. Got it. Thirty six. Right. So now now your your next just related for funsies question. Yeah. Is how many courses do you think I'm enrolled in on Duolingo? Seven. No, you're incorrect. Four. <laughs> so let me oh, down. Do you want to guess what language is? Uh, I'm guessing like, you know, uh, German just because that was the one you were best with. Yes, um, and I, I like to practice vocab every now and then. Spanish for the locality of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, French be for more romantic reasons. <laughs> no, but that would be good to be able oh. to say something other than voulez vous coucher avec moi, c'est ça. Okay, uh, okay, maintenant. Uh, L'autre uh, langue, c'est um, uh, la russe, Russian? No, no, I wow. understood what you were asking, but no. Okay, so I'm going to go oh. ahead and cut you off. Dang. Unless you All have right. another big guess. My other, my other romantic guess would have been Italian. No, but that would Dang. be a good one, especially given the fact that um, my husband speaks it. That would yeah. probably be a good one to speak, but no. Um, so one, another one of the languages I'm enrolled in is Irish. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it, but like I'm really apparently kind of horrible with it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I am enrolled in High Valerian. <laughs> oh, for some reason that didn't even occur to me. <laughs> I'm one of the 531,000 people in the course. Okay. Um, how many are you enrolled in, by the way? Because I know you, you do it. Do you, I don't um, know how much you are on the enrolled side. Oh, I, I mean, at least 12. But I mean, that's just because I haven't enrolled for the others. I mean, I, to me, it seems kind of silly. Why didn't, wouldn't I just automatically be enrolled for all of them? Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't had a lot of time to use it. I, my next goal was actually going to be um, doing something like if they had the course, uh, German for Spanish speakers. Um, oh, the yeah. double up. Um, that would be really you know, cool. I want to get better with my German and I want to get better with my Spanish, but one is definitely better than the other. So 
Mm -hmm. That yeah. actually really helped whenever I studied Chinese while living in Germany. It helped my German so much to be taught in German this other language. And so like I totally support yeah. that that process. That's awesome. Um, oh, as I say, I did have a follow-up question on High Valerian as well. Ooh. How many characters in Games of Thrones? Game of Thrones. I, I made the wrong noun plural. How many characters sure. in Game of Thrones spoke High Valerian? On the television show? Yeah. Jeez. You know, that's funny. Somebody was just asking in the the Discord for the hundred yesterday how many characters spoke Triga to say. And it's like, the hell we know that. <laughs> um, okay, so spoke uh, High Valerian or any kind of Valerian? Uh, specifically High, just because that's the one I... which I find interesting that that is the one that got the course. Yeah, Daenerys, Miss Sandy. Um... Uh, Tyrion, uh, Thoros, um, what's uh, Melisandre? So that's those are those are five. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, that guy never spoke it. His dar, his dar Zaloric, he spoke it. Um, and then, oh my god, well, I guess technically you would say Jack and Hagar spoke it. And technically, you'd want to say Arya spoke it because they both said Valar or So I okay. guess that counts. Sure. Um, and, and then there's like an extra who says Valar Hairis to Arya when she gets to Bravos. Um, oh, man. Oh, oh, uh, oh um, I feel like I, I'm missing. Do you have this? Do you have this for me? No, no. Actually, this was a, a question, I, and I could have looked it up. I didn't Google it. Um, and partially I was just curious because like when Game of Thrones started, mm -hmm. all I heard was Dothraki, right? Like yeah. all my students, Dothraki, Dothraki, Dothraki. And then when Duolingo got a course, they did High Valerian and not being a Game of Thrones person, I was mm -hmm. a little mystified. I'm like, well, why wouldn't they do? And I didn't know if it was like, well, it's a living language course. And so it's like, I didn't know if there were certain things things about how the languages got divvied up to different places. Um, but like, I guess I was just surprised because I was like, I didn't realize High Valerian was that big of a deal, but it must be with 531,000 learners. That's huge. Um, but then also was, to be offered on Duolingo. I mean, that's a huge undertaking for them to have you yeah. do as well. That was, it was, I think it's largely Daenerys, but also like if you watch uh -huh. Game of Thrones, it's all Dothraki all day seasons one and two, and then it's just dead. Okay. The rest of it is okay. just Valyrian. So it was probably just that beginning sort of yeah. hearer. Um, so I need to start introducing you to people as the guy who created High Valyrian and be like, oh yeah, Dothraki too. Uh, <laughs> Dothraki has more you, name recognition, I'll give you that. Which I find so interesting. Um, for anybody else who is curious, the um, course on Duolingo offered for English speakers with the most learners enrolled is Spanish at 28.1 million. The least that I can access out of my measly 36 that I have access to, the least enrolled course is Finnish with 237,000. So all the other languages are in between like those really big numbers. Okay. Finnish, Finnish is recent. I will say it, oh. it's very new. Um, uh, but oddly enough, that's the one that people were clamoring for. It's the one that I was clamoring for. Um, and it's one of the ones mm -hmm. I'm enrolled for. Very, very excited about that to finally be able to do that because I've only done the TY course. You know, there, I was, t I was enrolled in a Finnish course, a real one in Santa Monica, but, uh, that's it, exciting. Um, yeah, but unfortunately it, uh, it, it had to shut down due to lack of enrollment. Didn't get enough people. Oh, yeah. That is unfortunate. Um, Not going to miss that also, drive, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like driving anywhere in California must be like a whole thing. Well, yeah, but okay. I mean, West LA is just, all right. But anyway, another, another topic. But go ahead. All right. Next. So next, that next. was round one. Okay. And now round two, as I place our current facts there on the screen. So... As a reminder, David has already ordered. He stacked two facts. So on the screen right now, we have 531,000 as our highest number so far, 36 as our lowest. 
Okay. We're ready for round two and he's got to figure out where they fit either above or below or in between those numbers. The two facts that he needs to stack in any order he chooses to attack them. The first one is the number of native speakers of Basque, according to a quick Google search, <laughs> performed three days ago. The second fact he has to put in there is the number of languages listed on walls, so specifically on the World Atlas of Linguistic Structures online, in the Germanic branch. Can we play a different game? <laughs> <laughs> so I told you each round. Oh, by the way, this is all in the family. Yeah. <laughs> That's what our round is. All in the family. Each round is going to be more difficult. Um, oh my God. So, so, okay. This is really tough. This is really tough. Right? Because I live in a city right now that has about 200,000 people. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think of that, I think of a, I, myself as living in a relatively small city. Um, right, but um, allow I mean, me to heard, laugh. Who's heard of Garden Grove? Like, <laughs> seriously, um, actually, it was the subject of one of my true crime shows, and yeah, oh, great. <laughs> was it solved? Yes, it was unfortunately a young person in the community. Was it recent? Um. I want to say that one was early 2000s, maybe late okay, 90s, no, no, no. but it was it was no, a no, high no. school situation. So it's, not, it's not my wife's coworker, never mind. Okay, so <gasps> Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. You're interested in this kind of stuff. You should talk to Erin at some point. She'll, okay. She will dish. I, it was her last job. Okay. Hmm. Anyway. Okay, but um, back to So everybody at home, think to yourselves, you've got these two facts, native speakers of Basque, how many are there? and the number of languages listed in the Germanic branch on walls. And the two numbers that he's got to figure out where to place those facts relative to are 531,000 and 36. And I'm doing hand gestures, I'm getting excited, and David's looking very concerned because I know he doesn't like to be wrong, which means he doesn't want yeah. to just put out some guesses and like he wants the answer. <laughs> But I, I really have to believe that the number of native bass speakers is greater than 531,000. I really have to believe that. Okay. So I'm going to say that one is higher. Um, oh, and conveniently, I don't have to move the other little box then for yeah. the number. Um, and, and the thing with walls is, mm -hmm. I mean, you know what it's like. I, I mean, you look at that thing like those aren't separate languages. Why do they have separate <laughs> entries? But now, uh, okay, so this is walls though. This is walls, not ethnologue. So we're not, we're not even working with um, all of the world's languages. Mm -hmm. It's a very small subset of the of the world's languages. I think they only pull from two hundred languages. Isn't that right? Um, they for some of the data sets they pull for over five hundred. And what's interesting, you mentioned ethnologue, which I always call yeah. ethnologue, but I'm gonna go with ethnologue because that sounds fun. Okay. I wanted to pull this from their website. I wanted to pull both these, like I wanted this to be an ethnologue, ethnologue okay. round. Ethnologue, yeah, you're probably right. But yeah. they, they used to allow you to do up to like four searches before they put up their paywall. Now they literally only let you look at the big list of family names. And as soon as you click on one to get more information, it's paywall. And oh, so yeah. it makes me very sad because I used to have my students do assignments on the website specific to learning more about number of speakers and things like that. Um, and so it just makes me very sad because it's not yeah. just a paywall, it's a big paywall. And so there's there's been other um, there's been other drama with Ethnologue and SIL, which, okay. frankly, I, I think if academia wants to be done with them, we'll be better off. But, you know, it's just this is my man on the street opinion. Anyway, so I'm going to go with lower. I'm going to go with lower, lower that there are fewer languages from the Germanic family than 36. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to so be here. devastated. 
if I'm wrong. I will say you got one of them right. <laughs> no! <laughs> and you know which one it is. All right, so let's start with the one you got right. There are 750,000 native speakers of Basque. Um, again, according to my sources on Google. Um, and okay. so, yeah, I was actually in this one specifically, in case you're wondering, because all of these, I tried to pick reasons for asking the specific question or providing the specific fact. And this one interests me because as soon as I was learning about, you know, an in intro to linguistics, learning about language families, and then they always talk about, they always bring up, you know, these isolates. And that fascinates me to no end. And Basque is one of those language isolates that is like its own little thing. Um, and so essentially that means that it must be representing some indigenous language that was there before all the other peoples moved in um, who speak the Indo-European languages all around them. And so like that just fascinates me to no end. And like, I want to know more about Basque. Yeah, I, I'll say that the reason that I said it was higher was because you can select Euskara on the uh, on the ATMs in Spain. Well, you know, and that's a good reason. So that, yeah. you know, that's good. Um, I, well, I and and it was like it was solid. I was figuring if we were talking like 30,000 speakers, like there would be no way that that would happen. Um, right. It had to be up there. So, yeah. OK. Yeah. Now yeah, give it to me. It is this, up there. Gosh, this is oh, this is so upsetting because of course they're going to include things that I don't think should be included. And but then like <laughs> also also, how is it a language sample like with a a limited number of languages and you're having more than thirty six Germanic languages? How many? Okay, so and this and we're going to talk about this too because I was like, okay. what? I had the same reaction as you, and like I even went around clicking and I was trying to figure out do they give examples so I could see data sets about how these differ? And so this fact was a difficult one and it was meant to be sort of fun, make David squirm kind of fun. They list 39 languages. If you click on the Germanic branch and get more information on walls, they list 39 languages. So first, so then I have two follow-up questions for you. How many mm -hmm. of those do you think are varieties of English? Oh no, you're kidding me. Unbelievable. I think but you're like, thinking the wrong thing though. Oh, uh, probably. Uh, so I was going to say five. One. So okay. English okay. has one. And I'm, I'm saying that specifically because I want everybody and, you know, of course, even just thinking native speakers, they still yeah. list one with uh, British English, American English, Indian English, Australian English, Canadian English. Like you think uh, of yeah. all of the dialects surrounding the globe and they only have English listed as one of them. Okay. 17 entries go to another language in our family. German. 17. Okay. Okay, so I okay, yeah. seriously, and I can show you this because now <laughs> you've gone through all the answers. I did yeah. a screenshot because I was like, no way. And I'm like, David's going to need proof. And so here. Um, That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. They, okay, you're they right. They have, for instance, Bavarian German, Berlin uh -huh. German, Hanover, Bern, um, Erstschweiz. And some of them I'm like, okay, I can kind of see because there are like, if you know, for instance, um, varieties of German spoken in Switzerland. Yeah. It's like, it's different enough that, okay, I'll give them that. But as I was yeah. looking at it, I'm like, Bavarian versus Berlin versus Hanover? Like, those are mm. different languages? Um, oh, that ain't right. That ain't right. I, and then there is just a German listed and so i'm like does that include all of them or is that like some magical place where the german is perfect and it's not a variety i don't oh, oh and that's also separate from low german <laughs> i was like what um and so and i'm saying this with all love and respect because i love the walls and i use it all the time and i get information from it all the time but that just kind of flabbergasted me 
Yeah, the German German. That's the one that that has the the mysterious fourth gender. Daddy Dawson do. <laughs> no other variety of German has that one. <laughs> I believe you're correct, David. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. That was round two. All right. <laughs> round this three. Is, this is good. My uh my 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 confidence is floor low. <laughs> I have you right where I want you. Yep. All right, because the next ones, and so David's gonna be seeing um as I'm dragging, I'm trying to this is a whole thing, everyone, um, because I, I'm trying to keep it so that way all the facts go to the next screen, but that involves some copying and pasting. Right. Um, and so it's all good. It's good. All right. So now I've got our four facts. As a reminder to those of you oh. playing along at home, the four numbers we are currently dealing with, 750,000 native speakers of Basque way at the top. Underneath that, we have 531,000 number of learners currently enrolled in High Valerian. Under that big drop, we have 39 languages listed in the Germanic branch, and then 36 languages currently offered for English speakers for my level of access on Duolingo. Yeah. Now, these two numbers, these next two facts are both percents, which means David gets some help here. Because <laughs> he, knows, he knows relatively, <laughs> It has to be in a certain range once it says percent. Oh, that's even tougher. 800,000. No, but no, but like with 527, like I knew that that first one was in between 39 and 531,000. Now I've got to think about it. Jeez. Oh. So, yeah, okay. this is exactly. Round three is called Against the Walls. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. I had so much fun making this. Okay. So the first fact is percent of the 527 languages in the walls included in the walls chapter that have a tested tone. So this is specifically in the chapter focusing on tone. There are 527 languages in that survey. What percent of those have tone? And that includes, by the way, both simple and complex tone systems. And so they actually, mm -hmm. if you go look at the chapter, they give you three categories. One is no tone altogether. Uh, the second one is simple tone and the third one is complex tone. So I put two categories together and figured the percent. So that's one fact he has to place. The second fact is from a different chapter on walls about reduplication. And in the chapter on reduplication, there were 368 languages in that study. What percent of those languages have no productive reduplication features at all attested in the language? And so again, if you read that particular chapter on the website, um, one category is none, which is the one I'm interested in. Um, one is full reduplication only, and the other is productive full and partial reduplication. And so there are three categories, but on this particular one, I'm interested in how, what percent of those languages have zero. Okay. Um, I think I got it. I okay. think I got it. Uh, I think, I think that... I'm gonna have to like move some boxes. I'm yeah, ready, probably. I'm ready. Okay, so uh, the percentage of languages that have a tested tone is gonna be right in the middle uh in between 39 and 531,000. Okay. And one moment while I sure drag and drop. This is the you had said tone is going to be right there. Yeah. Okay. And so he put tone above 39. I believe he said that, but I'm repeating yes. it. Yeah. And above 39. So okay. uh and then um for uh, for the percentage that have no productive reduplication, I'm gonna put that below 36. Below 36, excellent. We are now, wow, dragging and dropping. And yeah. David is on edge. He wants to know if he got it right. I've run All out right. of room on the screen. I don't want to know if I got it right. I want to know how right I got it. 
because of course it's right. Yeah. I love the confidence. I also love that I have 100% gone off screen with my <laughs> six packs stacked. It's all good. <laughs> and even though it matters to no one but me, I have to fix it right now. Looks good. Looks good. All right. Okay. I hope it Here looks go. good. I hope it looks good because both are correctly placed. Yes. Woo. <laughs> and so I'm not moving them again. Okay. So um, the first fact, let's talk about the number or the percent rather of those 527 languages that have tone attested. This one was actually really close because if you recall, 39 is what he placed it above. Yep. The answer is 42. So 42% yeah. of those 527 languages have tone. Now, By in case way, you're curious. You, you mm -hmm. should have asked me for my number because I was going to say 42. Uh, <laughs> and now I can never verify that because you already have the answer. So like <laughs> the next one I'm going to ask you before I give the answer. Okay. So yeah. in case you at home are wondering, of those 527 languages, 132 have simple tone, 88 have complex tone, and then 307 have no tones. And so that yep. leads me to a follow-up question. Sure. What percent of your conlangs have tone, or just how many of your conlangs have tone? Uh, well, definitely, oh, shoot, actually. I mean, uh, the, the three that come to the top of my head are, of course, uh, uh, Shaili and Jama and, and Mini Shay, which we created. Um, which, by so the way, is three. my only conlang I've worked on with tone. I was never brave enough to conquer tone in a conlang. And then Ooh. when we started work on Mini Shay, you were like, it's going to be a tonal language. And I was like, of course. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> That was good, but um, but let me think. Was there another one that I'm just forgetting? Uh, because I feel like there was. It may have been one of the two I did for Dawn. That may have been a. That may have been um, a register tone language. But gosh, I am. Mm, I feel like I have another register tone language in there. Mm -hmm. but it's not coming to me. So I think it, I okay. may just have to stick with three. Definitely only one complex tone language. Mm -hmm. I, haven't done, uh, I haven't done one of those since. It, it, it'd be good to, to give that another shot. It'd be good to give that another shot someday. I may, and you, and you know, I may actually branch out and someday on my own, just do a tone language for funsies. We'll see, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now do you wanna tell me your answer before I give you the number? Um, yes the percent of the 368 languages involved in the chapter uh, that have no attested forms of productive reduplication. And of course, when they say productive, they mean it's actually like a part of the language's grammatical system, not yeah. like English, which has like, you know, partial reduplication in examples like flip flop or teeny weeny, like those kinds of onomatopoeic kind of feels. Um, not that kind. We're talking like actually part of the language's system in productive ways. Okay, so what percent do you think that is? 23. Close, close. 15. You made me you go higher. It. You made you me go it. higher. <laughs> I made him. <laughs> you, you I hope everyone out. heard, heard the coercive waves. <laughs> you just totally okay. psyched me out. Dang. That's what I do. That's what I do. And so in that chapter, um, it says that 55 of the 368 languages just don't have any sort of productive reduplication in them. 35 have full reduplication only and 278 of those languages. So most of them have productive full and partial reduplication, um, of course, using those strategies for, for different reasons. And um, this one I particularly found interesting because we had received a question um, for one of our Q&A features about like whether or not their conlang, like would it be natural to have full reduplication, um, you know, as they saw us working on the kind of crazy reduplication that ended up being in Gala's system. 
<laughs> and right. so they they had asked about that and then that got me thinking about like how common reduplication is in languages but if you're a native english speaker who doesn't speak or the you know you haven't learned some of those other languages with reduplication like you forget how common of a strategy that really is and how different it looks in languages around the world oh yeah no you got to have um you got to have some of it you got to it's got to be in there somewhere even if it's frozen um the thing the one that i actually find surprising to me are languages that have only full reduplication and mm -hmm. i know it's a small a very small percentage yeah. um but um i don't know i just find it very bizarre because it's like if you do it enough right mm -hmm. if you do it enough it's just it's so handy to be able to have that partial reduplication in there i just don't see why you don't do it right um, well and you had said it's a small number but and it is smaller than the 15 percent with no productive reduplication but 35 would still be around 10 percent of the languages from that sample of course that's one of the difficult things about yeah. about walls is like you have to remember it's a sample so that doesn't mean that you know on the whole if you continue studying all the other living languages that you could that the percentage won't change. Um, but at the same time, their samples include diverse enough languages that you do get a good feel for how common certain features are or where they tend to show up or if they're really associated with one family or another. Um, and so I know David knows that, but for anyone listening along, <laughs> word of warning followed up by a, but here's why you should still use it. <laughs> And so yeah. that yeah. has been our Link Sanity game. Yay. The Germanic branch. How <laughs> dare they? How dare and I, they? Okay, so here's the funny thing, right? Like I'm trying to find specific things that I would have or that we would have connections to. So facts that we could also have discussions about um, to, mm -hmm. you know, make it discussy. Game we both speak thing. a Germanic language. We do both speak a Germanic language. Um, <laughs> but like I was going to use a different branch of just like a language that I was interested in. But then I wanted also the numbers to sort of start stacking up there at the end. So it would potentially be harder. Oddly enough, round three was easier for you because you just have a good feel for those things. Um, and so I needed, I wanted a number that was in that 36, 39, 40, you know, like I wanted it to be somewhere mm -hmm. all around in there. And I was just seriously clicking on branches of the, of, you know, language family branches that I was like, oh, I would have something to say about this or this. And when I landed on Germanic, I'm like, first of all, that's perfect because it's right in between mm -hmm. 36 and 42, which are my two numbers I already had. And secondly, I was like, who would ever guess 39? <laughs> <laughs> the Germanic branch. Like, seriously, if you had asked me that, I think, especially thinking living languages, I'm pretty sure I would have answered like 12, yeah. 15, maybe, like, depending on how you're counting certain things. But I sure would not have put that number that high either. And so that one was like the, okay, well, I have, I have my evidence that it's there. I have said specific to walls, so I'm not lying. I wasn't trying to, <laughs> yeah. this is how concerned I am that I have my facts right. Um, but that to me was just kind of bizarre. So I guess you're right. That was the hardest one in all three rounds and I threw it at you in round two. You did. But you, you, I let you, you end on a high note getting both of those right. Yeah, you, uh, you definitely landed a haymaker on me. <laughs> in round two. <laughs> oh my gosh. When were we talking about haymakers? Was that on the I live stream? I don't even remember now. I, I assumed it was, so I assume people would know what I'm talking about, but now I don't know. But now I can't remember the discussion. I remember we talked <laughs> about it and we're like, why is it called a haymaker? <laughs> oh my gosh. That, yeah, that had to have been the live stream. <laughs> my goodness. I mean, I think this this could partially be due to to uh, just social socialization and what we grew up with. Do you also know terms such as roundhouse? Does that mean something to you? 
okay, it means like potentially two different things. I know there's a roundhouse kick. There you go. All right. All right. All right. See, you okay. got that. So, you know, so it hits okay, you so I'm gonna stop there. You got, you got that. Okay. All right. Good, 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 okay. good, good. Good. Okay. Um, and, and certainly, of course, jab is very, very common. Jab is very common. Um, like poke and jab? Like yeah, jab. Jab. You know, jab. Type of okay. punch. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. It's haymaker, roundhouse, jab. Um, hopefully sweep. You know that, right? Um, and that's where you like do the like on the feet, you, and then you, yep, yeah, 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 and they yeah, fall yeah. over. Okay, yeah, yeah. that really came across well on a podcast where you can't see me doing it and you only hear me going, <laughs> <laughs> that's but a, that's, that's what it sound, is. That's the sound it makes. Well, I mean, that one's fairly common due to Karate Kid. Um, uh -huh. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think of, I'll, I'll have to think of other things. I'll have to think of other things. <laughs> that's um, right. Haymaker was a fighting term. I was like, yeah. what did it even mean besides a big punch or something? Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> like I'm now like trying to place, why were we talking about punches? <laughs> Whatever, but, it's okay. Uh, okay, so then um, about the thing, where we talk about the thing. Oh, I know, this is just totally random, but for those listening, I did want to mention that since it was brought up somewhat tangentially, uh, we, we do have a Q and A on our Patreon. So if you have questions about language, or or conlanging or linguistics or anything you can just ask it uh to us and we can answer it on the patreon if you think the answer would benefit many um yeah i don't know you know or even if you don't know if it will benefit many but you're curious yeah yeah ask it <laughs> yep we've uh we we know everything about language <laughs> and <laughs> everything everything <laughs> which is obvious from this game right yeah but like some potential questions you could ask would be like should i sign up for ling 140 in the spring semester yes and we will we will answer that question for you without mm -hmm. asking you what university you're talking about <laughs> I just assume if it says ling something, the answer is yes. Yeah. You know, that's my assumption. Yep. <laughs> and if your university is like mine, then it would really be ling 1400 now because we have recently moved to the four digit system. And so I'm still oh. like, as in, as in recently, Whoa. as in just this fall, it went four digits. Oh and so goodness. our summer courses were still 300 level, but now they're 3000 level. So like, I'm still getting used to remembering to use 3000 and 4000 as the identifiers and um, still trying to remember to put the extra number in there when I refer to the course. Man, so does that mean you guys need to start moving to four names then? It could be, you know, Jesse Sassafras Hay Barrel Sams. Haymaker. No, hay barrel. <laughs> but why hay barrel? Man. I mean, you me don't want to be wheelbarrow. No, no. Come on. You have more class than that. I feel like though no. I, I need a different name there. I just I can't go with hay barrel. I'm sorry. But then, but then people could call you HB for your nickname. Hey, HB. Why would I want HB? For hay barrel. Yeah, but why is that like cool? Because for it's other your reasons? fourth name. But like HB isn't special. Like if you want me to be excited about initials, it needs to at least have like a Q or an X or a J in it. Mm, QXJ. Like, <laughs> Like I need to be <laughs> intrigued <laughs> by the letters, and HB doesn't doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. Wylestia Zantraxis Jivanzia. That's your name. No, really, really, what we need to do is spell sassafras with an X, pronounced mm. as an S at the beginning. Why not? And so it would be J X, and then I need a Q. And then, of course, um, Sam's, if you spell it correctly, has a silent Y at the beginning. Hmm. No, but think about it. Sassafras, right? Spelled with an X at the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And then, you know, when you give people the rundown of, you know, what you're doing in class, those will be the SASA facts. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is going to happen. And my <laughs> students are going to be so freaking confused. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to love it. And I'm not going to tell them why they're called SASA facts, of course, spelled with an X up front. Yeah. I'm just going to wait until someone finally says, you keep giving us <laughs> these lists. What do they mean? Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait and see how long it takes. Okay. That let me, will be great. Let me tell you about something I did. This is, I, I, I feel like 8% bad that I did this, but uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Ken, when I was teaching at the community college levels, just mm -hmm. freshman composition, um, I was, uh, we were going to go to dinner afterwards, um, but I had to teach the class first. So I'm like, well, you want to just come in? And he's like, oh, sure. sure. And so I said, oh, you know, it'd be funny. Why don't you just sit up front and then just kind of sit there and then we'll wait till somebody says something about it. And so mm -hmm. I went and taught the whole class. Every so often, I would actually kind of like say something to him. At one point, he like got up and went over to use the computer in oh the classroom. Gosh taught the whole class and nobody said a word. And so then I'm like, well, okay, well, I'll wait till the next class period. Or first I'll wait to see if I get any emails, no emails. I'll wait to the next class period, no questions. The rest of the entire semester, they just allowed me to have some like random dude <laughs> in their class doing stuff. Like he actually asked me at one point, he's on the computer, he's like, oh, hey, how do you get this? Like, oh, just one second, oh my I gosh. stop and go, they said nothing. Absolutely what? nothing. Uh, no, see, like my students would ask. So that's interesting to me because even when um, like uh, someone's in to observe me or something, I found like I need to tell my students somebody's going to be in here because they, I mean, they stare, they look, they're like, why is this person here? And they're taking notes and what's going on. And so like, I have to make sure my students know, hey, next class period, someone's here, but they're here to look at me. Don't worry, you just do you. Um, and so, yeah, I find that bizarre that not a single student, like, I guess, uh, I don't know, would I have been that student to ask? I guess it depends on <laughs> how approachable you were, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'd like to think of myself as extremely approachable, though I dressed nicer. So maybe that mm, was it. That maybe um, that, see, that just takes away I, all approachability. And that's why even when I teach plaid shirt, jeans, converse, I got to be approachable. I, I want you to imagine this. I wore slacks, nice mm. shoes, and a sweater. What? A different sweater every single class period, an actual sweater, sweater, like a nice what? sweater. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to need imagine. photo evidence and I feel like our patrons would benefit from said photo evidence. Guess how many pictures there are of me teaching during my two years of community college. I'm going to guess zero. Yeah. But like you never had a picture just. Yeah. I, I took, I took a picture of uh, something I drew on the board twice, two different classes. Okay. okay. One of them, one of them was Steve the mammal. And then the other one, what was the other mammal's name? It was the same time because I was just, I thought it was really cute what I drew. What was that? Yeah, I, um, I have accidental that's, pictures of me because students know, take pictures of the board. A, that's why I took a picture of you. Remember the last time I was over at your class? That's why Did I took you? a picture of you teaching. Because I was like, I, I bet she's <laughs> like me and doesn't have a lot of pictures of herself teaching her class. Actually, yeah, I don't. Um, as in, yeah, I don't so I think I have any. I sent it to you so that you'd have a picture. Now I need to say, you know, I'll have to make sure I kept that. Make sure I didn't yeah. just like say, oh, why do I have a picture of me talking? Did I at least, well, was I not pulling me. a face? It's easy for me to find because I can just put in Nakagdoches. <laughs> I do have, though, by the way, David took a picture of me that I have no idea when he took it. I just know it was on campus and he photoshopped a fedora on my head and I didn't even yeah. know that picture existed. And then to have a photoshopped fedora on my head was just fantastic. Um, yeah. 
it, it's kind of far away and so it's a little blurry but oh and i'm not even wearing plaid i'm not even wow that is a mm -hmm. dress down day that is my dancers against cancer shirt oh that's cool interesting also in case you're wondering took a picture of antipasta hey, our local restaurant you yep. oh that is great mm -hmm. I'm oh not sure boy i, I definitely took a picture, picture of that one moment well oh that was in our office that's it it's like yep where, where did you see a blue couch yes our yeah, office was has a blue couch tremendous okay so we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to make sure i get some of these photos from you so i can put them up so people know what yeah. we're looking at um and i feel like because the only picture i have yeah. another one another one of you teaching check it out long hair oh that is me in long hair yeah wow wow okay so but, but yeah like no this was not me like doing a goof or something i was specifically taking pictures of you teaching because i figured you didn't have a lot of pictures of you teaching but i swear you didn't send them to me i could have sworn that i did but i pulled we'll up our history our I'll photo of history okay and like, I'll take care of I do, however, have a wonderful picture of David presenting as drawn by my student's eight-year-old son, if you recall that oh, picture. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was something. <laughs> I will make sure that gets posted. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so I think we have regressed, <laughs> digressed. Yeah. I know, into, yeah. Let's just look at our photos and tell each other the pictures we have. Um, but that's cool because our game is done. Yes. I think we're, I think we're wrapping up. Oh, yes. I did have a quick question though about the game. How would that go on the, on the television show? So like when I got Germanic wrong, like would that be it? Was I, would I be sent home? Okay, so in the rounds leading up, and by the way, if you're a win sanity watcher, I'm only going to describe the current way the game runs. I'm not going to talk about the older format, which is different, but the idea is the same, but like how the winning and things happen is different. So there are two different formats. I'm going to describe the newer one, um, which okay. is my preferred one, by the way. So in the newer one, I picked up my screen, so I'm also at an odd angle here. In the newer one, um, two people are called down from the audience and they have like a supporting, like there's a purple section and a gold section. And that's important because when they're up front representing their section, they're playing to win themselves. But if they win, their entire group wins some money. So like you as the contestant oh. win $10,000, but the entire group gets $10,000 to split. And like, there's enough people that that probably means everybody is going home with like, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, but like a couple hundred bucks, right? So yeah, they're yeah, yeah. like, they're, they want you to win too, which means that whenever they're stacking a fact, they say where they think it should go. And then they get to turn around and ask their group for help. And like, sometimes mm -hmm. people will be like, oh no, I'm a basketball fan. I know this fact, like you need to move it here or whatever. Other times it's like people don't necessarily give good advice. It's just, you know, we all don't know some things. Um, right. And so like, that's an important part of the game because the audience wins, which means like everybody's super into getting <laughs> this answer right. Um, and so these two people face off against each other. And so like, Person one gets to pick one of the facts up on the board and place it. Then person two picks a fact they want to place. And then it's like, you're getting down to the facts that nobody wanted to place. Cause it's like, well, shoot, where does that go? Uh, and for every one you uh, place correctly, like you and your group will win money. And then in round two, each fact, it gets harder because now you not only have the original four up or original five really up there, but now you've got to put four more in there. So like it ends up, you're, you've got like nine facts sometimes 10 on the board. Um, and in that round, you win more money. And then at the end of that round, whichever contestant is ahead gets to play for $10,000. And that part is really on the contestant because they're given five things and they then, so they have five facts on one side of a screen 
and five numbers on the other side of the screen and they have to match a fact to the numbers Ooh. but they only have like a minute to do this and so like they place everything lock in their answers and then donald tells them like out of those three of them are correct or two of them are correct and so all you know is mm. like okay this is how many i gotta switch but you don't know which ones the rest of your minute, whatever you haven't already used, you get to rearrange the ones you think you need to rearrange and lock it in again to see if you got it right. Um, and if you did, you win. If you didn't, then you only win whatever amount you had collected up to then. So usually around like eighteen or eighteen hundred or two thousand dollars or something like that is usually what you get from the previous rounds. And so that's this how it goes. This is the most amazing game I've ever heard of. Do they have celebrity guests? And we're talking like D celebrities. I don't know, but I feel like I feel like you and Donald, when you met, should have become besties. And surely he's in your phone. Yeah. And surely you can just text him and be like, I want to be on the game and you know, play for charity or whatever, because even D list celebrities have to play for charity if it's gonna be a celebrity game. And so yeah, I <laughs> feel true. like that's something that you Man. should totally reach out and ask and i feel like if you're playing that means your laying time partner needs to be behind you in the audience um making you doubt everything <laughs> 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 no. oh, i know rapunzel's hair was at least 20 feet long oh yeah way longer than that but uh, uh man i i shouldn't have spent more time time talking to Jalen Rose than Donald Faze on the thing is I'm such a big basketball fan and it was Jalen Rose uh but but it's also, Turk I know do you know the floor is lava on Netflix yeah. yeah okay that's what we should do that's what we should do do it should do the floor is lava <laughs> do you know every time I watch that show I'm like oh I would have I would have drowned like first step in and you want to take me <laughs> <laughs> Like, seriously I, i'm like how are they even climbing across a wall i don't know i i lack upper body strength let's put, put that out there which means any sort of <laughs> obstacle room is not going to be my friend and my knees are horrible which means i can't jump and i definitely can't land on things that are moving oh yeah we should do it so, <laughs> so <laughs> and really oh the lamest partners ever as we we're both like do you think you could reach that no okay what do we do <laughs> just stand and stare at the lava <laughs> i would i would just get a, a nice vantage point and then i you know see you eventually fall into the lava in a very entertaining way and then calmly proceed to the exit <laughs> See, here's what I think would really happen, though. <laughs> the buildup would be that this is going to be entertaining. But like, as I'm positioning <laughs> to try to take a leap, I'm just going to slide right off what I'm standing on and just like, whoop, in the lava. Like, it's not even going to be fun to watch. It's just going to be like, oh, <laughs> down. Yeah, that, that show, <laughs> man, I would be horrible at that show. And it looks so painful. So, so for the next podcast. <laughs> there, there will be a lava room. But of course, since I'm the host, that means I don't have to go through it. I'm just going to narrate as David tries to navigate <laughs> the lava filled room. <laughs> <laughs> that does give me an idea, though. Ooh. Oh, like hangman, paper and pen style, but lava room and you have to get an answer right to get a certain kind of jump <gasps> yep this this could happen this could happen <laughs> hopefully illustrated by you uh, obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay all right now this time all right. for real i think we need to say yeah. goodbye otherwise we'll just continue <laughs> on talking about games and three hours later you're all going to be wondering what was this podcast about? <laughs> Lean sanity Lange. for the win. Language, <laughs> la la language. <laughs> language. Wonderful. <laughs> la, 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 la. We are using uh, language. Lava, lava language. <laughs> All right. La language. 
Sorry. I hope everyone has a great day. Stay grammar and we'll see you soon. One moment while I find. There we go.